Here we are with another reaction to the BBC's own Top of the Pops. And this one is from 30 years ago today. And look, Bruno Brooks is presenting. You lucky people. Love and Kisses from Danny Minogue. And I'm sure there was a lot of boys and men. <laughs> at the time who would have uh, really appreciated Danny Minogue's love and kisses. Who was your favourite Minogue sister? Leave it in the comments whether you were a Kylie guy or a Danny guy. Um, so welcome to another Top of the Pops reaction. This episode from March the 28th 1991 so exactly 30 years ago today. And um, yeah, Danny Minogue, we're, um, we're starting out with uh, something that I, I kind of remember this, but I don't remember it brilliantly because I think it was, uh, it's a bit bland, a bit sort of meh, this. I mean, uh, nice outfit that she's wearing, um, maybe um, the hat, I, I could live without that, but the, the top that she's wearing, yeah, it's very nice. Um, so yeah, Danny Minogue, she, um, like her sister Kylie, uh, older sister Kylie, I think she, Kylie was, was older by a couple of years or so, um, started out as an actor. Danny Minogue, she did play someone on Home and Away for, I don't know, a year or two in the late 80s or early 90s. Um, but um, that's really all I've seen her in, sort of, acting-wise. I mean, she... Had a probably more sustained presence on British TV in more recent years, or within the last ten years, say, as a judge on the X Factor. For when did she leave the X Factor? Um, I don't know, six, seven years ago. It's the bloody X Factor. Who gives a shit? <laughs> oh, crap. <clears throat> you say what you like about the pandemic last year. And as I'm recording this, I'm really hoping that, as you're watching this, that um, things are getting back to normal now. But um, we'll, um, we'll have to wait and see when this episode comes out, whether that's actually the case or not. Um, but one of the good things about about COVID and everything was that it meant crap like the X Factor. That was canned for a year, weren't it? Well, Britain's Got Talent wasn't. Yeah, they still did Britain's Got Talent, didn't they? They just did it with like a remote audience or something. Hmm. Simon Cowell's got to make even more millions of pounds, remember? Don't you forget. It's not because he hasn't got enough money. Come on, let's feel sorry for the multi-millionaire, maybe even close to a billionaire, Simon Cowell. Yeah. He needs to have his TV shows be on TV every year. Be fair, people. Come on. Yeah, I didn't enjoy that. I don't think that was very good. Oh, well, Abigail Barry's going to be pleased because the Bee Gees are on. With Secret Love at number 10. You know what? I wouldn't have said the Bee Gees were still having um, top 10 hits this, um, this late. Say, I mean, still 30 years ago. Um, but um, there's been a couple of times I've reacted to the Bee Gees on, uh, on a Top of the Pops reaction. You Win Again from 1987. One of my favourite singles of the 80s, is that. Um, fantastic stuff and a well-deserved number one. And I recall, was it um, maybe 1995 or something? Uh, I had quite an early reaction I did from probably getting on for two years ago almost. Um, I, I recall another single that was uh, from the Bee Gees. I don't, I don't, know if it, I don't think it was top 10, but it might have been top 20. But I mean, what a career they had, the Bee Gees. You know, um, starting out in the 1960s, I think Massachusetts was their breakout hit. Then they did all the whole disco stuff and the soundtrack albums for Saturday Night Fever. Um, Sergeant Pepper, the film for that, which I've never seen, apparently it's awful, but they featured heavily on the soundtrack to the Sergeant Pepper movie, which um, was late 70s. Um, I think, who else was on that um, Sergeant Pepper film? I think Paul Nicholas from Just Good Friends 
the John Sullivan sitcom was also on that. Um, <laughs> not relevant to this at all. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this Queen Ethelberg Secret Love number 10 um, from the Bee Gees. I kind of vaguely remember this actually. Sort of thing you'd hear in like a shopping precinct or something as it's just a pleasant mid tempo pop song that's not going to offend anyone. Oh, yes! What a song! Gary Clayle, Human Nature. One of my favourite um, singles of this year, this. Um, big memories of this. I remember um, at this point in my life, I was 10 years old would be 11 in a few months time June 1991 but I remember being at primary school taping this off the radio and um, just another great sort of step in the early well not that early but the sort of early 90s evolution of dance music uh, credited I think to Gary Clail on you sound or on you sound system uh, specifically, but human nature, yeah, I really like this, always have done, liked it when I was a kid, oh yeah, and I remember the, uh, the somewhat flamboyant, shall we say, uh, co-vocalist here, I wonder what his name is, I'll try and find out, but, but a great um, housey piano there, I mean, Gary Clayle as himself, what did, uh, Bruno Brooks's job was a scaffolder before he uh, he became a, a chart act. He does look like someone who'd kind of have like a um, a white co is it white collar? Oh well, no, it's, no, it's not white collar, is it? That's the other one. Someone who'd have like a kind of uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right word. Be working in like the building trade or something, doing something with his hands. He, look, he looks the sort, doesn't he? But yeah, um, certainly the highlight for me so far is Human Nature by Gary Clayle on New Sound. Brilliant stuff. Remember really enjoying this. I think well, I was taping a lot of stuff off the radio at this point and listening to it on my Walkman, taking my Walkman to school, um, probably pestering my mum to buy batteries all the time because I was just listening to stuff like this all the time. Wasn't buying music particularly. Um, <laughs> you know, my father was someone who would encourage piracy. We didn't, we didn't call it piracy back then. We just call it taping off the radio, but. Um, Home recording is uh, another politer term for it, but you know, basically stealing content. <laughs> but yeah, great, love that. Oh, I think we've just seen the re uh, the um, new entries and climbers. Um, yeah, I forgot they started doing this. They didn't show a full top 40, that's annoying. No move at number 38, say hello, wave goodbye, 91, soft sell, Mark Allman. 36, a new entry for Inspiral Carpet. Good song, Caravan. Moving up four at 35, can you dig it? Oh, that's good, can you dig it, Mock Turtles. And no move at Another good track, been caught stealing, I like that. There's a new entry at 33, here we go, CC Music I don't Factory. really remember that one from CNC. And four at 32, over to you, John, here we go Well, oh, bloody hell, Jar Bunny's still hits. having hits. There's a new entry at number 31 for Danny Minogue with Love and Kisses. Oh, looks like we're going, uh, I think he said all the way up to number 13, didn't he? Yeah, Gary Clayle, Human Nature, lovely stuff. Oh, remember that at all. And with a new entry at number 13 here now on top of the oh. pops are Snap with so the Snap Megamix. So here is Snap and the Snap Megamix. So I don't really need to explain what a Megamix is, do I? 
all right, I will anyway. Yeah, I'll do a J-splain of it, even though, really, if you're watching me and watching Top of the Pops, you should know what things like Mega Mixers are. They're like a medley, and it's just a sort of more trendy term for an act, the um, selection of big hits, um, big songs, well-known singles, etc. Just all mashed up together and remixed together to form just one continuous Mega Mix. So, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, this is obviously the power. Let's see if I recognise um, all of these tracks that's featured within the Mega Mix. Cult of Snap. Um, I think I quite enjoyed that as uh, uh, when that was released as a single in probably 1990. I think Cult of Snap may have come out. The power, of course, was uh, number one. My brother had their album on tape, World Power. I think he got that for Christmas. The same year I got Jive Bunny's album on tape at Christmas. Yeah, although I was play, I wanted the Jive Bunny tape. I wanted the Jive Bunny album. Um, in hindsight, looking back three decades later, uh, my brother definitely got the better end of the uh, Christmas presents uh, there. <laughs> The Snap album. I remember him listening to it quite a quite a lot. It was uh, it was decent. Oh right, okay. Well, um, who doesn't know this? It's a new entry at number seven. I think this is a re-release though of "Sit Down" by James. Um, yeah, James, indie band, they were um, on Factory Records, New Order's label, for a brief period in the 1980s. Not at this point, I think they moved to Fontana or somewhere like that um, by this point. But a former Factory Act. And I think uh, this was a reissue of Sit Down, as far uh, from what I, I, if I'm wrong, I'll, uh, I'll correct myself on the uh, ticker bar. But, um, yeah, everyone knows this. I mean, it also came with ra a rather cringy sort of dance, didn't it? I remember sort of seeing it at school discos where uh, people sat down when the chorus came on. Yeah. I mean, I suppose as dancers go, it's pretty easy. You just sort of sit on your ass on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but James, yeah, good sort of indie band with a slight sort of folky tendency this song certainly has a folky tendency other james singles i'm trying to think of some other good ones that i remember she's a star from that would have been around 96 97 that was a good single um laid i believe laid featured on american pie 2 weirdly enough it came out about 10 years before american pie 2 but uh, do you recall I think it was laid. I'm sure, it was being on the on the American Pie Two movie and presumably the soundtrack album for that film. But yeah, everyone knows this one, don't they? Sit down. I like it. Um, I th it was a bit overplayed in the day. I have to say. Does it get higher than number seven? Um, I would guess it does. I've got a feeling it was top five, maybe top three. I don't think it got to number one, though. I'm pretty certain of that. Yeah, I've got no problems with this. This has been a pretty good episode so far. Um, Danny Minogue was kind of bland, a bit of a rubbish way to start. The Bee Gees, I was pleasantly surprised by that, but I wouldn't complain if I never heard it again. The Snap and Mega Mix was uh, okay. Uh, Gary Clayle, definite, definite highlight for me, could be the highlight of the show for me. And uh, James Sit Down, which is a decent indie pop song, and um, one that I've always found pretty good. If a little bit overplayed back in its um, heyday 30 years ago. 
amongst others. Not a DJ next, but a sing DJ. Shabba ranks and Scritti Politti. All oh, right, okay. So Scritti Politti featuring Shabba ranks at number 24. She's a woman. Yeah, I remember even at the time as some kind of a 10 year old who uh, wasn't overly familiar with the. Uh, you know, different genres and everything. But I remember even at the time, I thought this was a slightly unusual pairing, really. We've got Scritti Politti, um, I think we're led by that guy in the red baseball cap. What's his name? Green Gartside, I think his name was. They were kind of a um, new wave act of the 1980s. They had some minor, almost going into major hits. They were kind of a little bit on the fringes and... You'd see them on top of the pops and hear them on the radio now and again, but they never really had that massive sort of top ten smash, I don't think. And the, um, I think a Scritti Politti song features on the Who's That Girl Madonna uh, soundtrack album that um, I actually bought and showed in a video um, some months back. Uh, but yeah, but uh, for Scritti Politti, a, a British band, I think um, they might be Welsh actually, possibly. Uh, to collaborate with the Jamaican dancehall reggae artist Shabba Ranks just seemed a bit of a strange combo to me. I mean, I wouldn't say this is a reggae song particularly, but obviously Shabba Ranks sounds like he's toasting. That's what the uh, Jamaicans call uh, their version of rapping, toasting, by the way. I'm not on about when you grill bread. Um... Shabaranks, um, my abiding memory of Shabaranks, uh, if you can call it that, is when he was being interviewed on The Word, um, may have been probably a bit after this, by Mark Lamar, and uh, Mark Lamar just challenged him on his homophobia, just like, you know, didn't sort of give him an easy ride of it at all. And I don't think Shabaranks career particularly recovered, in, not in this country anyway, after that. But anyway, number 22, definition of sound. Um, sounds like something that's got a sample in it, that a sample that I should really know, but um, I would probably have to listen to and not talk all over to try and determine what it was. So, yeah, um, a sort of sample driven hip hop sort of conscious hip hop that sort of Della Soul um, PM Dawn sort of uh, vibe that's, that's going on here with definition of sound um, I've got very vague memories of this um, uh, did they have any other hits definition of sound possibly possibly this is all right. I mean, there's a couple of guys on stage miming it playing guitar, so maybe it's not been a, a real sample. Maybe that someone with an original guitar playing bit on, on the record, but... Yeah, the chorus is all right. Now then, was it Definition of Sound who did Wash Your Face in My Sink? Might not have been, that might have been someone else. Perhaps because it's like quite a long song title, and also begins with a word beginning with W, like Wash Your Face in My Sink, Wear Your Love Like Heaven. Perhaps that's why I might be getting the band's confused. Maybe it was the same one, I don't know. I'll have put it in the ticker bar. That'll be something nice for me to look up during uh, editing. And that is a big job, people. It's not just me being able to sit down, watch an episode of Top of the Pops, and then put the video of me and this video together and just um, find all the facts. It takes a lot of time to get everything looking vaguely watchable and um, the fact-finding especially now with the ticker bar where I like to have more or less continual continual information you know that's a, that's a lot of work and takes a lot of time but 
I enjoy it, and I hope you do too. And that was all right, that definition of sound. Oh, God, new number one. And we've got the Rolling Stones. High Wire. It's a new entry at 29. Um, what album will this have been on? Um, I'm not... I like the Stones. I've got a couple of Stones albums. I've got a Greatest Hits of theirs on mini-disc, and I've got a Greatest Hits of theirs on vinyl record. Um... I would say, if you had to give me a favourite era for the Stones, it would probably be their sort of late 60s period. You know, maybe some of their 70s stuff as well, I, I really like. Um, I think by the time the kind of 80s and then early 90s came round... Um, yeah, they were still a, massive, still a massive band today in 2021, you know. Whenever we're able to get back to sort of live gigs and everything. Whenever well, the Rolling Stones have got breath in the body. Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Ronnie Wood, Charlie Watts. You know, I think they'll be wanting to get out and, you know, uh, do a massive world tour again. <laughs> you know, they will literally rock till they drop, I think, the, the Stones. And fair play to them. You know, I, think, I don't think they were very cool at this point. Um... Mick Jagger, I think in his in his day in the 60s and 70s, you know, he was kind of seen as cool and hip and a sort of symbol of British pop culture. But you know, about at this point, you know, he was just kind of a middle-aged guy, you know, trying to be sort of uh, hip. And how many how many how many kids has Mick Jagger got? I remember reading a Wikipedia page on him ages ago, and like under the family or personal life section. I couldn't believe how many children he's got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that was average. All right, we're getting a top 10 and a new number one. Sock it to me, Bruno. Ah, uh, former number one there. That was featured on a Levi's ad, I think. The new entry at number seven is the highest this week for James with Sit Down. Look at seven and six. Good song, Let like There Be Love, Simple Minds. Possibly one, one of my favourite Simple Minds singles, I would say. And moving up three to number four, uh, where the streets, where have, the streets no have no name. That was actually a medley with Can't Take My Eyes Off You, that was from Pet Shop Boys. And last week's <laughs> number one is so we're not going to see the stonk Hale this week. Stonk what a shame. The Comic Relief 91 single. Oh yeah, uh, well, okay. Well, going back to me taping off the radio and uh, listening to these tapes just kind of all the time on my Walkman, like every playtime at primary school and just sort of in the garden, like on weekends and things like that. This was on. I did like this, and I still quite like it. Yeah, I mean, when you look at Chesney Hawks now, it was like, you know, it's hardly the coolest act um, doing the rounds in 1991. But this is a catchy pop song. You've got to, you can't deny it. Has it aged well? No, it does sound of its time, doesn't it? But this chorus, listen, is has there been a catchier chorus ever written in the history of music? I would argue possibly not. Although, leave your most catchiest songs in the comments and uh, we can have a nice debate about it. So yeah, how, how many weeks has this spent at number one? Um... Got a feeling it spent at least four weeks. I think it was um, heavily featured on a movie that came out at the time, Buddy's Song, which starred Chesney Hawks. He was an actor as well, although I don't know if he's done much acting since. I don't know if he's done much singing since, to be honest. And uh, Roger Daltrey, another actor slash singer. He, of course, Roger Daltrey being the longtime vocalist in The Who. But yeah, this was on Buddy's song. 
I believe. I've never seen that uh, British movie that came out in 1991, presumably. But yeah, I'll, I'll listen to this song loads. I think just for the chorus. I mean, this sort of midsection here is is kind of a little bit sort of generic, but. Yeah, the, the verses have got like this kind of, you know, standard verse, and uh, the, uh, like I say, the chorus, I mean, uh, it's just a proper earworm, isn't it? I'll take these headphones off after I've uh, turned everything off and ended this video, and uh, I'll no doubt have the chorus to the one and only going through my head for the rest of the week. Uh, I, I mean, a, a, a good number one. Um, this has been a pretty good episode. Not mind-blowingly excellent for me, but Gary Clale enjoyed that. A um, couple of others that were pretty good, and Chesney Hawks, which was a number one that I was very fond of as a ten-year-old. Oh, okay. Have a very happy Easter and a very safe one. Thank you for watching Gary Davis on the show next week. All the best. So, um, Jive Bunny, I don't know if this got much higher. Um, obviously, Jive Bunny, their first three singles um, all got to number one. And um, then I think the sort of gimmick had run its course after that. But the, uh, they did scrape the top 40 at least with this. Um, but um, with this being the last, um, the last video, the last um, song played on this episode of Top of the Pops, um, it is time for me to say my goodbyes. Um, as for what's coming in April, I have planned um, April's episodes. Things are subject to change, but um, two pretty different and pretty far apart years. Um, looking at my notes, which are not notes as such, just basically dates that I've written down. Um, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to do those for you in April. So look out for a couple more episodes in April and hopefully many more throughout the rest of the year. But I want to thank you all for watching along this episode of Top of the Pots with me. Um, thank you especially, of course, to all of my wonderful subscribers and patrons. My Patreon link is always in the description text box, so please go and check that out if you're happy to support me and the work that I do on my YouTube channel. Um, what do I think of this? It's Jive Bunny. It is what it is. Anyway, I'm going to go. Cheers, everyone. See ya!